Resident Evil is the most famous and some would argue the best horror franchise in all of video game history. That was too close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. I'm sure you boys didn't just tag along so we could sing Kumbaya together at some Boy Scout bonfire. Then again, maybe you did. Today on Game Files, we're taking a look at Capcom's seminal survival horror franchise to see how it has evolved to take its place as one of gaming's all-time greatest franchises. Resident Evil's origins trace back to Capcom's 1989 Famicom classic, Sweet Home. This game would later be considered a landmark in horror game design due to its free-form exploration, inventory management, and storytelling methods. Sweet Home's director, Tokoro Fujiwara, originally conceived Resident Evil as a remake to be helmed by his protege, Shinji Mikami. Adopting many of Sweet Home's gameplay elements, Resident Evil would eventually transition away from its status as a remake due to a switch from psychological Japanese horror to a more American zombie horror inspired by the work of George Romero. Of course, Resident Evil wasn't called that just yet. The original name of the franchise, which it still retains in Japan, was Biohazard. In North America, 1992 Shoot 'em Up Biohazard Battle and punk metal fusion band Biohazard meant that Capcom could not copyright the name in the United States. An internal company contest was held to choose a new name, and Resident Evil won out. When it was released in 1996, Resident Evil quickly became the best-selling title for the nascent PlayStation. Its combination of brutal imagery, mixture of puzzles, exploration, and combat, as well as its impeccably designed world, established the conventions of the survival horror genre. While a success, Resident Evil was also known for its infamously poor localization, with bad voice acting resulting in lines like this. We should start from the first floor, okay? And Jill, here's a lockpick. It might be handy if you, the master of unlocking, take it with you. Thanks. Maybe I'll need it. Which resulted in a redub when the game was later remade in 2002. But that camp has remained in its sequels. Resident Evil's popularity caused Capcom to immediately begin production on two sequels. Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3 which launched in 1998 and 1999, respectively. A fourth major installment, Resident Evil Code Veronica, hit the Dreamcast in 2000, while a prequel, Resident Evil Zero, would land on the GameCube the same year as the remake of the first Resident Evil. All the while, spin-offs were released, such as the portable Resident Evil Gaiden and the multiplayer-focused Resident Evil Outbreak. Back at Capcom, Resident Evil developers were tired of developing the same thing, a sentiment shared by Mikami himself. One producer even described the franchise's formula as shackles that were holding everyone down. When it came time to develop the next main entry in Resident Evil, Capcom aimed to rebuild it from the ground up. Development on Resident Evil 4 took over five years, as development restarted several times. Multiple templates were made, including a fast-paced action version helmed by Hideki Kamiya that eventually morphed into Devil May Cry. That was scrapped, and eventually, Resident Evil 4 would take the form of a third-person shooter mixed in with classic survival horror elements. Resident Evil 4 was released on January 11, 2005, and has since come to be regarded as one of the greatest games ever made due to its faster-paced action, memorable narrative, and strong level design. More importantly, Resident Evil 4's over-the-shoulder camera has become the industry standard for third-person shooters. That alone has influenced the likes of Dead Space, Uncharted, Mass Effect, God of War, Gears of War, and Batman Arkham Asylum. Resident Evil 4 also changed the survival horror genre. Some would argue for the worst. Its focus on action resulted in other horror franchises changing their templates to follow suit with decidedly worse results. And unfortunately, emphasizing action over horror also weakened Resident Evil's reputation. Resident Evil 5 was more a departure from the franchise's legacy in comparison to 4, as co-op became the main feature for the first time. At the very least, it still had horror elements, which were rarely found in 2012's Resident Evil 6. 
both of these games had strong sales. At the time, Resident Evil 6 was one of the best-selling titles in Capcom history due to pre-sales. But it came at a cost, as many felt that Resident Evil had lost its way as critical and consumer reception waned. The franchise took a five-year break after the release of Resident Evil 6, returning with yet another evolution in 2017's Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. It was the first time Resident Evil featured a first-person camera, as you explored a derelict plantation evoking the original in its emphasis on exploration and survival. Much like Resident Evil 4, it sparked renewed interest in the franchise, which culminated in 2019's remake of Resident Evil 2. If you haven't played it, we strongly recommend it, as it is a masterclass in how to successfully remake a classic for a new era. Now, a remake of Resident Evil 3 is on the way, along with the eventual release of whatever form Resident Evil 8 takes. Because what has made Resident Evil survive all these years is its willingness to change what defines it. From horror to action, from its camera work to its camp, Resident Evil has fundamentally changed the video game industry. And based on its track record, it will continue to change it in the years to come.